Hello everyone. Today's verse of the day is Proverbs 31, 25 through 30. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat of the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Mothers, the thing I want to pull out of this is how much boys particularly need their mothers. A woman is something that every young boy really, really needs. It gives them a balance. I was talking to my wife the other day. It's like, you know, fathers, we give them a strong foundation to be strong. But women teach them, especially moms, they teach them to see the beauty, the artistry, the details in things. They enjoy the times. They pick up the faith. Their antennas are more spiritual to God. All the art that is in the world. When I look at the Asian art and, and the various arts around the world, you know that that was women inspired. For if it was a man, he would just put it together. We just throw things together a lot of times. Most of the times, the things that we do are because of women. To find our spouse, to please our spouse. And mothers, boys, growing up, they need to see that gentleness and hear that gentleness. Let's get into the word. Isaiah 66, 13. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. A mother provides that comfort, that, that soft spot in the heat of battle, that calmness, that faith that everything's going to be all right. You know when a soldier's at war and they're maimed or hurt or they're about to die, they don't call for their wife. They don't call for their best friend. They don't call for their dad. They call for their mother. Most of the time, they have known to be calling out for their mother. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. God showing, look, I'm the ultimate. I will never forget you. But guess what the next ultimate is? A mother. Sometimes they fail. You know, sometimes women fail with the motherhood. But most of the time, she will never forget her nursing child. And she should have compassion. Definitely on the son. <laughs> there's, some, there's a special bond with a, a, a mom and a son that just can't be replaced. They love their daughters, too. And they have a special bond. But it's it's really... It's really strong. Proverbs 620. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Do you see that? The men we command. Hey, do that. We don't necessarily explain why we tell you to do that. Just go do it. Because I told you to. I'm your dad. But the mother. Forsake not your mother's teaching. She fills in the details. She makes things go smooth. She brings beauty to the situation. Proverbs 1, 8, and 9. And again, this is a repeat. Anytime there's a repeat in a word, there's a whole other chapter. Proverbs 6, 20, and then Proverbs 1, 8 through 9. Hear, my son, your father's instructions. Hey, boy, go do this. And forsake not your mother's teaching. For they are graceful garland around your neck and pendants for your neck. For your graceful garland around your head and pendants for your neck. Yeah. You will understand why. 
they sent that. Proverbs 10, 1, the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. You know, and I'm realizing this, becoming a father, when I get disappointed sometimes at my children, that I roll it off. I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm going to teach them to the best of my ability, and then I'm going to let God deal with them. But a mother, a mother, she takes it to heart. She does not want a foolish son. She will cry and cry day and night. She will pray day and night. She will never stop seeking a foolish son. She cannot let him stay a fool. But a father, hey boy, you know where I'm at. I love you. I will always love you. The Lord is pretty firm about this. And I believe that you're going to come around. I'll see you later. But not a mother. Not a mother, no. Proverbs 23, 22 to 25. Listen to your father who gave you life. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Like we said, women have longer antennas. They pull up signals. How much more wiser does a older woman have? She has seen so many types of people. I talked about this before. I'll share it again. My grandmother, she said, Warren, there is no such thing as female friends. Because I, I came home. I, grandma was like, who's that? I was like, oh, it's, it's a, a female friend. She said, Warren, there's no such thing as female friends. I was like, what? There's no such thing as female friends. And she left it at that. What she was trying to explain to me is that she's either your wife or she's not your wife. There's no in between. We don't need a bunch of female friends once we get married. And we should stipulate that as men. If you're single, stipulate that as men. Listen, we can be acquaintances. <laughs> I could like you. I could like hanging out with you and stuff. But in the end, when I get married, our friendship, it disperses. I can't come to your house. We can't watch... TV, we can't play video games or whatever thing. There's no such thing as female friends. I'm not looking for a girlfriend. I'm looking for a wife. And when I did that, the Lord kept my plate empty until I found my wife. Women have good advice, especially older women. Ephesians 6, 2. And three, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It's the first commandment that had a promise. Not, it's the first commandment that said, listen, honor thy father and mother, that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on the earth. You will live long and your life will prosper should you honor your father and mother. They got your best interest in mind. And then so to show where this, this promise is, is in Deuteronomy, and he's talking about the Ten Commandments. He says, the, the Lord says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, that thou shalt have none other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. All right. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and that, 
and thy maidservant may rest with you, with you. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. And here it is, right here. First commandment with a problem. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It's the first commandment with a promise. And trust me, as a man who's almost died 12 times and been rescued by the Lord in mysterious ways, I can tell you, it's a good promise. He promised things. He'll keep it. 2 Timothy 1, 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith. A faith to dwell first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. Do you notice that as Paul was talking to Timothy, he brought up his grandmother and his mother. Who has the longer antenna? The women. Who hear things first? Who see things? A perceptive and wise woman picks up things. So he's saying, Timothy, you have the faith of your mother and your grandmother. Leviticus 19.3 Everyone you shall revere his mother and father and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. You shall revere your mother. It starts off with your mother. You shall revere his mother. What does revere mean? To revere, to be afraid, right? But also to stand in awe and be awed, to honor, respect, know the wisdom that they have. Know that they have, if there's any person that has your best interest in mind, it's your mother. If you are treating your mother bad, shame on you. Shame on you. You want a short life. You best respect your mama. And then, Proverbs 31, 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. This is Proverbs 31. And what I like about Proverbs 31, and, and that why I started with it, Proverbs is the most wise sayings that there are, right? And it begins talking about wisdom. So you usually, when you have a, a book, you always start with the best and the first and the best and the last. Usually you leave the best for last. What is the last things of wisdom that Proverbs gave about? It gave about wise woman. Because we should definitely honor them. We should definitely honor them. Proverbs 31, 30 through 31, the last two verses. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, God's reverence for the Lord, has all for the Lord. That the same all that you need to have your mother. She shall be praised. She all's God and you all her. <laughs> Give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. She won't lead you astray. You all God. You all her. You see? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our mothers, Lord. Thank you. May we always remember. Me, particularly, Father. That my mama loves me. That my mama loves me. And that she's always there to help build me up. And may we always honor and re respect them, Lord. In Yeshua's name, amen. Goodbye.